Dave here at Allen Home Limited. Now we deal with loads of scope mount inquiries every day and we tend to have to work out the height of the scope mounts needed fairly quickly to be able to run through the different options available for you. Now one of the first questions we'll ask is what scope do you have? Now we use this information to then work out the minimum height needed for your setup. We'd always aim to get the lowest setup possible using what mounting hardware is available. I'll quickly show you on our diagram to illustrate how we measure the BH or build height. Then I'll run through the process on a couple of scopes to show you how it's done. This is the measurement we're looking for between the bottom of the mid tube to the bottom of the objective lens. There are two measurements we can find out or measure, which are the objective lens and the mid tube. Divide the scope in half to make it easier to calculate. Half of 62mm is 31mm and half of 30mm is 15mm. The measurement we're looking for is simply half of the outer objective, which is 31, minus half of the mid tube, which is 15. So our minimum height needed is 31 minus 15, equaling 16mm. Now you can sometimes find the information you're looking for in the manual or online but the simplest way is to measure it. And we use a set of calipers. If you don't have a set of calipers, then a ruler will be fine. Now your objective lens might be a 50 or a 56 mil, but that's just the glass measurement. We're after the measurement across the whole diameter, including the wall thickness. This size scope, for instance, is a 56 objective, but it measures 62, so the wall thickness on this one is three mil. Whereas this bow scope has a 50mm objective lens, but measures 59mm. So the wall thickness here is 4.5mm. So it's always best to double check the measurements to be sure. Once we've got our objective lens measurement, we then measure the mid tube if you don't already have this. So this measures 30mm. So exactly how we've just seen in the diagram, we take half of our objective lens, which is 59, so that's 29.5mm and half of our 30mm mid tube which is 15mm and our simple calculation will be 29.5 minus 15 which is 14.5mm. Now this is a simple calculation to do and it will set you in the right direction when you're looking for scope mounts and the height needed for them. Now there is a way to go even lower but you do need your rifle to check this and I'll quickly show you how and where we're going to be looking and it's the difference in height between the action and the barrel and how on some barrels it tapers away so we'll be looking at this measurement. Now of course this mounting setup would be fine but you have to bear in mind that you can go that little bit lower. A simple method to see how much lower you can go is to put a straight edge where the mounts are going to be fitted so on top of the action, put that across and just measure the gap down. Now we'll just show you a few different rifles to show how different rifles differ in the amount of drop from action to barrel. I'm taking the measurement about two inches or 50 mil from the front of the action, but check where your scope will sit in relation to the rifle. A Tika T3 drops four mil. A Seiko 85 drops five mil. A Remington 700 drops four mil. Schultz and Larson Victory drops 5mm. So as you can see, if you do want to go lower with your scope mount height, you do have to take this measurement of drop. So for instance, this Schultz and Larson Victory, we've measured it as 5mm drop, which means you can go 5mm lower with your scope mount height. And if we were mounting that power scope of 14.5mm we took earlier, 14.5mm minus your 5mm drop that's 9.5 mil. So you now know that 9.5 mil is the absolute minimum scope mount height needed for this particular setup. Now you can go away and have a look at different scope mount options, but what we would say is probably compensate by going up one or two mil, maybe to 11 mil, just so you guarantee that the scope is not going to be touching that barrel. So for instance, if you were looking at the Picatinny rail system, you pick at any rail at five mil, then you can choose the rings accordingly. So if you chose a set of rings at six mil high, for instance, 
your five mil rail and six mil rings, that's 11 mil. You know that you've done your calculations and it's safe. Just double check your calculations and you should be fine. And that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please hit the like and subscribe button and we'll see you again soon.